Hello guys, Adam here, the special guest. No introduction needed, but I'll introduce him anyway. Dan, <laughs> home physique, clanging and banging, right here on Trey Rex. So, this is going to be the first, um, I don't know, sort of like interview, discussion, however you want to call it. And we'll just say, doing this for the Google Hangouts, first one Adam's have done, so we're not too sure how it's going to go, but um, welcome everyone for watching, and welcome Dan. How's it going, mate? On my own channel, since we don't know how to do it on yours. <laughs> yeah, no, just before, I mean, the bit that you people won't see uh, on YouTube, we've been on now for half an hour trying to suss this out and actually get it recorded. And one of, I don't know, a couple of pairs of fucking retards we are, aren't we? <laughs> Can't get it over out there. Green cells between us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we're finally on, and um, hopefully this will make its way onto YouTube. I think we'll be going up on um, Dan's channel, because for some reason I've got a strike against my channel, so. Bit of a plus to fuck on my app there, but if I asked the Jack Dass, that's what um, my transformation was last year. But yourself, Dan, um, you used to be a bit of a fat ass. Last year, I lost just 30 pounds, which was a big transformation. But on your channel banner, obviously, you've got a picture of what you used to look like um, a couple of years ago, and you don't look anything like that now. So just talk us through what well, was going on in your life back then and what made you sort of going to the gym and spare style lifting weights? Well, in saying that, I do quite look like that, or again, <laughs> well, ever since getting all snapped up on that, I've sort of, uh, I've gained a fair bit of chub again, but yeah. not nowhere near as bad as it was before, obviously, but um, you just got to try and keep on top of it at the end of the day. Um, I always did used to train. Um, I've always been in gyms ever since I was 16 when I was at school. I used to go to a gym. I never used to train properly. I always used to just do like a typical bro split sort of thing, just uh, throwing dumbbells about or, and generally just using machines. I never did any squats, never did any yeah. barbell bench or deadlift or anything like that. So, to be honest, I think that's how most of us start. I mean, I don't think there'll be any one of us here on YouTube or any one of us just watching who goes into a gym and gets it right first time. No one will go in and earn the first week, be squatting, deadlift, and bench pressing. Most people go in. You get a treadmill or a bike because it's easy. You know, I will work one of them. Then yeah. I might do a couple of bicep curls, you know, maybe a couple of, you know, like shoulder presses or something like that. Just easy. And it might take a couple of months before someone actually picks up what the fuck they should be doing in there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think a lot of it as well is if you, you've got to remember where you came from as well because you see a lot of people that start up channels and that and then. Um, they, they come across like they're some sort of expert, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, well, I bet you started in the same place that yeah. I did, doing daft shit on cables and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, just, yeah, I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. So, yeah. before, you know, before you started training, what type of lifestyle did you lead and how is that different now? Obviously, as dedicated training as you are, the YouTube, the home gym, how is your lifestyle now that you're in shape compared to, you know, what it was before? Well, I always used to um, I always used to be out on the piss all the time. That was my biggest downfall. I always like Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. I'd always be out on the piss and often go out on Sunday as well. And uh, yeah, you'd usually end up with after being out on the piss, I'd get like a, a pizza in or a kebab or curry or whatever. And, uh, Palmo, do you know what a Palmo is? Palmo. What's yeah. Do, do you know what a Palmo is? Tea side uh, Palmo. No mate. <laughs> oh fuck me! <laughs> you've you've never lived, right? <laughs> you know, um, Martin, the last train with him, he's been on a couple of oh, yeah. videos, the Polish guy, he came to England four years ago, five years ago, and he basically, off-season, Martin lives on Palmos, right? What it is for people who don't know what they are, I'll try and get a video or a picture up um, on the channel, but it is basically 1,500 calories, right? Okay, it's chicken, no. breadcrumbs, cheese sauce, cheese over the top, it's just a grease fest, right? And then the size, I'm not exaggerating, but the size of like a plate, you know like a normal fucking plate that you'll get, if one of them will fill a standard size plate, um, okay. yeah, I mean, a tea, a tea side, that's right. Is that what just like a, is that a local people. dish for you lot then? You are sorry? Is that like a local dish for you? Yeah, I mean, I think if they started in Millsborough, yeah. then they worked their way around tea sides, but um, <laughs> you know, outside of tea side, I don't think many people, many people will know what they are. Fucking hell, all we've got here, mate, is a patty butty. <laughs> <laughs> Little scrappy patty butty, yeah? Yeah, scrappy patty. <laughs> <laughs> Good old scraps, aren't you? 
So yeah, like you see, you're sort of out of the piss all the time. Um, yeah. And were you still training then? Yeah, I was I was training with my mate at the time, and um, but he, what's it sort of like all happened at once? He um, he got really bad kidney failure, like both of them just shut down. Yeah. And, um, so he couldn't train anymore. He stopped going to the gym. So I was going on my own, and it was around about that time that I started thinking, well, I might sort myself out a bit, you know. I don't want to be big fat bastard anymore. So I started looking into the training side of things, and um, I started going to the gym real early in the morning, um, just to avoid the crowds, you know, just to to get it done because I got fed up of waiting for like equipment and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, because I want training with him, I, I started getting into it more, you know, because you're on your own. Yeah. I like get more into it, do you? And um, it was ever since then, like I, I always started training on my own, and I just thought, well. Uh, this is what I'm doing now, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's not changed, and I think you can get a bit too balls deep with it all. Um, I was planning to do a little video talking about like how I've transitioned from being not doing anything really to being a bit hardcore with it to the point where you know you turn into a bit of a bit of a loser, don't you? Yeah, and just you everything. Balance, don't you? Yeah. yeah. I think I'm at that stage now where I realise it's not that serious. It's not a big deal. It's just something you do. Yeah. Um, not me. So it's a good balance between obviously social life, normal life, and yeah, getting well, yeah, gym, getting what's the for you on that one? Because at the end of the day, you've done competitions, you've done something that I've not been able to do. So yeah, what 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 have you found? Oh you well, know, I know that I'm very lucky. Right? I know I'm very lucky. I actually have a girlfriend who stays with me. When for four months of the year, can't go for a meal, can't yeah. go drinking, none of that shit. So you know, it's definitely when I first started competing. Um, it was hard to sort of get uh, get started sort of social life because you know you can't go drinking, so you can't see your mates as much. If you like in a relationship, I mean I'm engaged, so it's hard to obviously have a good relationship when your girlfriend or your partner wants to go out and um, just for a meal or something like that. Comes yeah. to Valentine's Day, most couples go for a meal and we're just sat in the house, so it does take its stress. But I'm lucky to have you know someone. Who can see past that? Um, but you know, for some people, it just be too much, and I can see why relationships would break up. Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, and I'm just like fucking that's it. It's just my first year competing, just small little shows, but to get to the standard of you know where pros are and things like that, you need to have a strong partner or someone yeah. who's willing to make social sacrifices for their you know for their benefit and that. But it does have it take its toll on you. But you know, it just you need to have the have the right mindset and. For me, I've not drank since I was 19 year old, so <laughs> now I've got proper, got proper mums. 22? Oh, sorry, 23 now, 23. I've got proper mums on my 19th birthday, which is a big factor in not wanting to drink anymore, but if I didn't go to the gym and stuff, I dare say I'd have kept drinking up in that, but I don't know, I'd just give it up because I thought um, to make anything with the gym just yeah. eliminate that, but I mean, I'll probably miss out. I mean, I'm 10, 20 years from now. I look back and think, oh, when my mates were going out all the time getting pissed and that, and I was just sat in every Friday and Saturday at night, but, you know, it's just one of them things. Well, no, it comes down to what you what you enjoy doing and what you like doing. I mean, I, I like going yeah. out here. Yeah. I enjoy having a beer, but I enjoy doing all this as well, and yeah. you can't balance it, but the one thing you got to take into your head is that you'll never be your best if you're always on the beer, simple as that. Yeah. Not because, like, of calories or anything, but just because you feel, like, shy for days afterwards. You yeah, know? two or three days after, you can't, you can't put everything into your training. I'm fuck me if I go out on a Saturday now and I because I, I like to drink the strong ales, you know, like what Brian Nielsen drinks, he's into all the uh, craft beers all, and that. that's, all that's the beer ones. Of that. Yeah, definitely. And if I have a load of them on a Saturday night, Sunday's a write off for me. You know, yeah. so if I was planning to train, I, I ain't got no chance because I'm fucked, I can't even get out of bed. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, sounds the funny when it does come to drinking, because even when I used to drink, don't like the taste of lager, but yeah. It was just drinking those alcohol pops, the girl drinks, you know, yeah. so it tastes like lemonade or iron brew wickets and shit like that. Yeah. And they would go down easy. But, uh, so, I mean, I don't miss the drink because I didn't really like it anyway. So, really like it, yeah. um, I sometimes go down the town every now and then with my mates. So I'm not like a hermit, but, you know, two or three weeks in a row going down the town when you're not drinking, it's enough to put you off for a year. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I tell, tell you now, if you ever want to get, if you ever want to get put off not going out, go out and stay sober because you yeah. just... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the thing to do. I mean, last, I was out a couple of weeks ago with my girlfriend and a couple of my mates, but before then, the last time I was out was my girlfriend's birthday, which was May 2013. 
So I went for almost a year without going out because that's how pissed off I was going out yeah, sober and it's just shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. I, like that was one. Thing, that was the biggest change that I made for me uh, for my like transformation was I completely knocked beer on the head and drinking on the head. I didn't drink at all. Now for yeah. me, I used to be really into the beer. And yeah. uh, not to totally knock it on the head and never do it was a big deal. And like I used to go out with people, like uh, our lass, and go out with our family, and I wouldn't drink. And I was yeah. a right miserable bastard. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why right. I always get told if we went to a party or something like that, people are always asking me, girlfriend, or why's your face here? Your boyfriend got a face like smacked ass. And yeah, I'm like, exactly. well, I haven't. I'm just normal, but because yeah. everyone else is. Yeah. yeah, it's just like I'm on my phone constantly. Yeah, I'm just one of them. Exactly. exactly. That is exactly what I'm like. But, and when you sit back and think about it now, and, and sort of reflect on it. Like for me, for what I did, it wasn't really worth it because all I did was act like a tit for yeah. a year, you know. But that's where yeah. it comes into like finding the balance. And what you've got to sort of realize is, if you say I don't know what you you want to achieve, but if you want to be like a top end level pro for anything, you have to make them certain sacrifices. But ninety percent of the people that get into cheap training and going to the gym, they're not going to be top level pros. It's just a no. hobby. But yeah. everybody into the fantasy of they're going to be the next Mr. Olympia, they're going to be the next um, uh, Andy Bolton, you know, stuff yeah. like that. And it doesn't doesn't usually happen. It's just you get it into your head and you become fixated <laughs> on it. It's like how many people? I mean, I don't. I'm not into sports really, but how many people you know grow up playing football and would like to go on to be a professional footballer? But yeah, yeah, it's not exactly. happen. For 99% of the people, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, they just don't have it. You, you've got to have the the raw talent's got to be there, and it has to be in you, and and, and <laughs> anything like. It's, amazing, it's nice to have a goal. I mean, yes, I would yeah. like to think, oh, you know, ten years time, I could be at a pro level, but I'm not, you know, relying on this as my exactly. main source of income. I'm not relying on this as a career. It's something that I'm doing now. I put a lot of effort in. Every my life revolves around it. And if I can make it, then you know, I've sort of hit my dream. I've hit my goal. But if I don't make it. You know, I've got a career, I've got an education, where I've got a social life to fall back on. You just have to yeah. put everything into something, and if it doesn't work out, you're fucked. Yeah, because that's the problem, isn't it? Like you say, you, you, it's not, you've got to have a goal, and you've got to like have something you want to achieve. Like, there's certain lifts that I want to achieve, you know, I want to have yeah. a decent total. But the thing is, is that I'm not thinking that that's my life. You yeah. Know? It's not my life, you know. It's, but it's, <coughs> there's more to life than the gym. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it just just depends on what you want, and but you've also got to be real with yourself, I think, and, and look at your own talent. Now, I mean, at the end of the day, um, I'm not like I ain't, I, I ain't superhuman strong, and I haven't got an amazing physique, you know. So, in all honesty, to be to be realistic with myself, I'm never going to be top level at anything like that. Yeah. I'm 28 now as well, so it's too. I'm getting into it too late anyway. You know yeah. what I mean? Look at I mean, I'm 23 now, and if you look back at like someone like, I mean, I train, a lot of people know that, uh, I train at Eddie Elwood's gym, and the people who've yeah. never heard of Eddie Elwood, go and Google him, five times Mr. Universe, look back at photos of him when he was 23, and he looks like, you know, someone who's winning out there, winning competitions, 100 times better than what I look like now, um, you know, he started at a younger age, probably no, better genetics. That's not people doing that, because you're doing, you're doing really well. If you notice the competitions that you've been doing, you got into you, you didn't even place in your first one or something, was it? but then you you ended up moving up, didn't you, in your last competition? Yeah, I mean, it's, a, back on, like. it's encouraging for me to look back at, like, last year, the first show I did was the Navinoff Britain. <clears throat> Looking back now, I looked shit. At the time, I thought, you know, I've made a good change, I was happy with the progress. Then I was looking at some photos from... The end of last year, the show I did, which was in November, I placed third in my show in October. There were six of us, so big improvement. And just comparing the photos from I did another show in October, looking back at November to May, massive improvement in just, you know, that couple, like that half the year or whatever. So coming into the show that I'll be doing um, 12 weeks out, yeah, it's 12 weeks out now, you know, as long as I'm improving and making progress, I'm happy. I mean, obviously, I'd like to turn up and win. But I'm not going to do that this year. You know, I'd be, I'd be lucky. I'd be very lucky to place in the top three. I'd, I'd like to do that, but I don't think it's really going to happen this year because I don't have enough experience yet. But yeah. as long as I keep improving and looking better, then you know, I can't complain. Maybe in a few years' time, then I will. I will be able to win. Yeah, definitely. Well, I, I, I think you can because uh, you've got the ethics for it. You put in the effort in. 
and uh, you can see how you're improving. And, and you knew the first time round, you, you even said it yourself, I remember you saying that. Um, you said you looked shit. You said you weren't yeah. ready for it. But this, the last one you did, you could tell you was you was Bob on like. Yeah, I look a lot better. So thanks, like, obviously, thanks for uh, picking up on it. I just on about that. Um, I remember it was pretty much when I first started getting into YouTube, you were one of the first guys I came across. You know, before I made my YouTube channel. You came across me. Hey, steady on. I don't do give <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when I, before I actually made my own YouTube channel, uh, like the fitness uh, stuff, the only channel I used to watch really was Elliot Hulse. I watched him for years. And yeah. I, don't know, I don't watch all of his videos, but I'm subscribed to them. I watched quite a few of them. Um, and I loved his stuff. And then uh, it was like January last year, I decided to actually make my own. And I started searching for a few more channels, and you honestly were one of the first ones we came across. And one of the first conversations we had was a. I remember you were talking about you were wanting to enter a natural bodybuilding show, but you said that you don't want to do it yet because you'd want to go in and just boss it and win it. And then obviously now you took a bit of a turn from you know the bodybuilding and just pure the strength side of things. So what sort of made that change from wanting to do you know like a natural bodybuilding show to just the strength the strength training? Well, for me it was um, it was mainly sort of again being realistic with myself and also. Um, it was my relationship, really. That was the biggest thing because, like, what we just spoke about for four months, you didn't go out, you didn't do anything, you was a miserable cunt. Yeah. But I was the same, you know. Yeah. I was changing mentally as a person. Like, I've always been a fun loving, fun loving person. I've always liked going out on the piss, having a laugh, and just, you know, being laid back and enjoying myself. Yeah. But what I was finding was that I was turning into a miserable bastard. But I was also sort of. Um, I was looking at our lass, and I remember it was it was one night. It was um, the distinct moment. Was I turned around to her and I said something like, "I was like, oh, why are you interested in this? Why don't you want to go to the gym? Why don't you want to get all like uh, ripped up and you know?" Yeah. Like and I and, and I couldn't understand why she didn't want to do it. I thought, well, why don't you want to be like this? Yeah. And she sort of just said to me, "You're like, you're a knobhead. You're a test. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know." I don't want to do that. And I mean, our last, she's she's stick thin. She's you know she's in banging shape and she doesn't even need to try. Yeah. And uh, and um, <laughs> but it's like I, I couldn't couldn't get my head around it. But then I sort of clicked. Then and I thought, hang on a minute, you tend to right to here. Yeah. And I started to think like, for me, I went to like I went to Body Power last year and I was yeah. watching the guys on the stage and that and I. Well, I watched. The, I, I never wanted to do physique anyway because yeah, I'm, I'm I'm pretty much got the wrong sort of proportions for that anyway. Yeah. Um, I looked at it and I just thought, these guys are going out and they're mincing about on stage and they just get picked apart by the judges and I thought, I'm not into that. You know yeah. what I mean? And um, I just sort of thought, do you know, I don't, I don't want to have to train and do something to have somebody sort of tell me, oh, you're shit here, you're shit there. Yeah. Because uh, I, I just thought, nah. Whereas with... With powerlifting, I was always been into strength training ever since I started doing five three one. Yeah. I just thinking, well, you either lift it or you don't. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know what you mean. And I thought, well, that seems more interesting to me. And also, with with powerlifting, you don't need to be like down at five six percent body fat. You yeah. Know? It gives you a bit more freedom, yeah. doesn't it, with your lifestyle? Yeah, definitely. This like, is something uh, actually yesterday. Massive respect for you for doing what you did. You got up on stage, you said you was going to do it, and you did it. Yeah. But I just wasn't, I wasn't mentally strong enough to do it because it was just um, just too much shit going on with my relationship. And, yeah. You know, stuff like I think that. At least you can look back and you can sort of admit, like, when you obviously you turned around your last and you said, oh, why don't you do it? You can look back now and realise you were a tip for saying sort of thing, whereas, you know, you have a lot of people, especially for me, I think, you know, not putting, I'm not, not trying to generalise them, but, the people do the physique and the fitness model type of people, though a lot of them are just spice boys they, and they do just want to like you know they're very egocentric, they're just about themselves. Whereas with the bodybuilders, people think, oh, those are more self centered, but I think you know the spice boy type people are the ones who are more self centered and they can't realise they're being a tip, do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But, I mean I don't want to generalise everyone in that because I know not all of them will be like that, but a lot of people, you know, will be like that. You see them in the gym yourself, the the younger lads, the skinny lads, and they just stood there with the vest on, pulling the vests up while they're training and that, and they just look like knobs, do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And what you're saying is absolutely right. And you don't you don't want to be like that. But um you know your obviously your channel is about, you know, training from home and everything like that. In your gym setup, what you can see on camera, it 
perfect, you know, it looks mint for like a YouTube sort of series and that. So if you you've got a couple of videos up about uh, you know how you went through picking stuff for your gym, how, you know I've I think you've got two videos up, is it? And you've done a couple of reviews on some of the equipment you've got. I've got, got a few up now in that playlist. Um, home gym buyer's guide. I've got um, buy, buying barbells, buying dumbbells, buying a bench, buying, well, obviously, the I did the review of the rack, and I've got, like, yeah. a frame one and a plates one. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> this is live, people. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um... But for me, it's like uh, I, I did these videos mainly because I was getting a lot of questions from people, you know, asking the same shit like, uh, "What do you think to this to this bar?" Um, yeah. Mainly, uh, generally, seems to be coming from Twitter. A lot of people would be messaging me saying things like, oh, I'm, "I'm looking at this bar or this uh, weights kit. What do you think to it?" Now I started yeah. off with like the body power kit, which was like a, a, t a 20, 20 kilo seven foot bar. Olympic bar, yeah. With some plates. Now, the body power plates are, are small. They're only 400 mil diameter rather than 450, which is the proper diameter. Right. So I was I was always doing deadlifts from like a, an inch deficit, and it was only when uh, somebody pointed it out to me that I even knew about it myself. You see, but yeah, it was that because obviously YouTube videos people could see you pick yeah, exactly. and pick that off. Yeah, and, and I never knew that. And it's like things like this that you don't take into account when you're buying your stuff. You don't really, you're not really aware of it. Well, I won't anyway. But yeah. Um, you know, so I bought all this stuff, and like I, I ended up buying a new barbell because that body power one was shit. It, it, it yeah. just seems up. It's crap. It's shite. But it's, you know what they always say: you buy cheap, buy twice. And yeah. True. So I was talking to a kid the other day on Twitter, and I just said to him, "Look, hindsight's fucking precious. You know what I mean?" And I'm telling you now, if you buy that stuff, you're only going to be replacing it in a couple of years. Yes, time. he's wasting like, money. Yeah, exactly. So I said, I wish somebody had told me this. Yeah, giant like guinea pig for everyone on YouTube. Yeah, exactly. And I just, <laughs> uh, I just said, at the end of the day, if you are going to buy, a, if you are going to buy a home gym and you're planning to do it, you've got to think long term. You can't just think, um, I'm going to do it for a couple of years and that's it. Yeah, because yeah. otherwise you might as well just stay going to a gym because it's not going to pay for itself. It's not no, worth. I mean, you spent. I can't remember what the figures, but you said in one of the videos where you built the gym, how much you've spent on it, and you worked out about how many years membership that is. And obviously, yeah. for people like us, for people on YouTube doing it, it's like a life. It's a lifestyle. It's not just a hobby. It is like yeah. a lifestyle for us, and it's going to be a long term thing. So you're, you are going to pay it off. But some people oh, might just get an idea in the heads, or I'll go out and buy this, this, and this. Use it for a couple of years, and there would have been a lot cheaper for them to just go to the gym. Definitely, yeah. Especially having to replace stuff because they're buying two lots, three lots of stuff because they're starting off with the shit gear. Yeah? Um, you know, it's going to be an expensive deal for them. Yeah, yeah, easy. You just. But uh, um, if you had to sum up, you know, like everything you've done with your home gym so far, and if somebody just wanted, like, like, what would be the one tip? You know, you could send them over your videos for like in-depth information. That if you said you them one tip, someone, you know, young teenager, someone like in their early twenties, whatever, who's got the money to do it though, what would be you know the one tip to a uh, if they wanted to start their own the home gym? I'd uh, I'd give them my mushroom tip. You are your mushroom <laughs> tip. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I say, do you do your research to begin with, and go for as much as you can afford. You know. Yeah. Okay, I mean, think more long-term budget rather than short-term budget. You might only be able to afford 300 quid now. So most people that are doing it, they all seem to say the same thing, like, oh, I can only afford this at the minute. Yeah. And I said to them, well, a lot of places do not percent finance now. So yeah. why not get fucking ticked up to fuck or not percent and just pay it off monthly, you know? Yeah, so and you the get the it, better stuff. Yeah, exactly. You'll have much better gear at the end of it and you'll... Uh, It'll just do you better, you know what I mean, rather than buying more later yeah. to replace Make it. Yeah, more sense, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'd love to get a gym. I mean, I train in the gym, obviously, way six times a week. <clears throat> Coming down for competitions, it's only seven days a week in the gym because I'll do cardio on a Sunday. But, you know, it sounds stupid, it sounds obsessive, but with some days, like over Easter, the gym's just shut on random days. Oh, some days, nice. you know, you might not... You might not be able to get into the gym on a certain day or whatever, or you might be, you know, you might not get home late so the gym shuts early or whatever like that. So I would like to have a similar setup to what you've got, but I just yeah. don't have the space for it. Do you know what I mean? I live at home, but I spend most of the time at my girlfriend's house still. Yeah. But I don't have the space to like, have a gym or something like that. But long term, it's something that I would like to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, you you bang on with that. It's um, 
and things like uh, East, like the holidays and stuff like that, it is annoying. And if you are if you are following a routine, yeah, like, that's another thing that comes into it about finding a bit of balance. Like when I was really into it, um, like been a bit over the top with it. Christmas Day, I think it was 2012. Yeah. Christmas Day was my yeah. bench press day. Yeah. So I up in the morning and I benched. I did a full bench workout. Now. Yeah. You don't do a full bench workout on Christmas Day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I years ago, before I, um, before I started Eddie's gym, no gym was training now. <clears throat> so my training wasn't. I was always being serious since I was 18. My training, but not as serious as what I am now. Christmas night. I'd be doing weights in the house, just arms, just for the sake of doing something. Cause I thought, oh, I can't miss a day, I can't miss a day. Yeah. And looking back now, it's like, it's pointless. But yeah, if you are in a routine, and like you say, that like your bench day, day or if it was for me, say, this yeah, Christmas last year, sorry, it was uh, Wednesday, was Christmas, Christmas day on a Wednesday. For me, that was heavy triceps uh, pumping back. <laughs> and was, you have to just fucking. Tra- change your day, your week up so you can get all your workouts in because just in your head and it won't make a fucking off. difference to you at all literally no it's all in your head isn't it it is it is a lot of this is, is all in your head and, it, and to be honest what, once your head goes that's it you're fucked you know yeah you, <laughs> the same thing goes for like people's diets and that like I, I get a lot of people asking me things like about um, you know like oh I've I've had 20 grams of protein less than I should offer the day yeah <laughs> Is my fucking knob going to fall off? You know, all the time. Like, going to the bodybuilding.com forums, going to the team, uh, the team boards, and you'll see people, oh, Mr. Meal, what's going to happen to me? Or, exactly. uh, <clears throat> I'm eight, under eight on my protein, what's going to happen to me? Well, I can answer for you now. Fuck all's going to happen to you. That's Definitely. exactly what's going to happen to you. Fuck all. Definitely. But people, yeah. Especially young people. I mean, I was like that myself when I first, I was like, oh, knackered on a night. But you know, I'd have to wait another hour before I could have my cottage sheet before bed. <laughs> and forcing yourself to still just to eat that food. But no, it's just, you know, I'm not I'm I'm by no means no expert, but I've learned from some of the mistakes I made when I was younger. I picked more knowledge up. And you know, just looking back at how I was then, just stupid. But a lot of people start off like that. Exactly, yeah. And that's what, another thing that we were talking about, wasn't it, before. We were saying that you start off and you do go a bit go extreme with it because you think that's the, the right way. But yeah. Like you'll know yourself. I mean, you've done comp, comp prep, and for really, it's only people like yourself yeah. that really need to be strict with it. You know, as you're getting close to to your your, your, your stage date, like yeah. Whereas me and mortals like us that are just trying to, <laughs> it don't fucking really matter. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can just get away with a uh, you know, okay, if you don't hit your protein or your carbs for one day, or you go a little bit over or something like that. Twice it's only really, you know, I try and eat good all year round, but last. Sure, November, I put all twenty pound on in two or three weeks. I just went completely stupid because I hadn't had anything bad. I dieted strict for seventeen weeks, and something just went. And for two weeks non-stop, I just ate crap every single day. And I think myself, why did I do that? Because you know, you just putting all that weight on, you have to then lose it all again. But if you are so strict for so long, something eventually does have to go, and you just will go down. So you do need a bit of a break every now and then. Yeah, definitely. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to lose your mind, and you, you know, it's going to, you're going to piss yourself off and put yourself over. Yeah, totally, definitely. And that's why um, you can do it. Rich, you know, like, I mean, I've always done if it fits your macros. I've always done that, and um, I appreciate eating eating clean or bro food and all that. Yeah, it is. It, you, it, the only the only benefit to eating shit like that, in my opinion, is that it makes things easier to track, and yeah. also. Usually a lot more food volume, yeah. from stuff like that. Whereas, in all honesty, for people that are just trying to get to a certain level of um, like leanness, yeah, you don't need to eat like a fucking bro. You know what I mean? Nah, do you fuck you? Just as long as you've got a rough idea of what foods you should avoid, or you know you're not eating crap every single day, then have a rough idea of the amount you're eating. But then that that will do you as long as you're working hard and as yeah. long as you're eating eating clean. But relatively clean, you're gonna you're gonna be able to get there. It's only when you sort of get like balls deep in it, like you said, that's when you need to start tracking, you know, the precise measurements of everything. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter. It's more so because if you do end up on on a lot less calories than what you're used to as well, you um you start getting hungry, and if you're smashing in like fucking pop tarts, <laughs> like yeah. I am, that's 400 calories gone like that. I mean, I can eat I can eat a pop tart in about fucking three seconds. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
on about pop tarts, you know, that video you put, was it 11 pounds of pop tarts? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what, what's the crap? <laughs> I've had most of them already. <laughs> a, couple, a couple of months ago, like I say, when, during that two-week period where I was just eating crap, one night I had four waffles, corn syrup on them, then after that, two uh, two pop tarts, corn syrup between them, so it was a pop tart, corn syrup sandwich. Oh, you know, I ate one or two, and then, you know, that's that's it. You had 11 pounds of them from America, so what's the crack with that? Uh, well, I, d I don't know if you're aware, but uh, Freaky D, my man, yeah, he, uh, he did a competition. Basically, you had to take a you had to take the piss out of Brian Nielsen, you know. Nice. And, come on, I'm I'm, I'm British, so uh, <laughs> you know, don't we? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so basically, you had to do an impression of Brian, and then you also had to do as many push-ups as you could do in one go. I think uh, I did about fifty odd. Right. And um. I did the competition, obviously I just went to town, had the glasses on, had a beard, flat cap, all that shit. Big uh, long socks, big purple socks, pink socks. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't go that far. <laughs> but yeah, I managed to win it, and um, credit to, uh, to to Dennis, like, he um, he shipped them to the UK, and it cost it cost him $200 to send oh, them here. Yeah. yeah. I, nearly, I, I nearly felt like saying, just send me $200. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I think that would be more useful, but I mean, the pop yeah, tarts are yeah. quite nice. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, these American ones are fucking, uh, the bob on, mate. You'll have to uh, give us your address and I'll send you a few. Yeah, but, but I'll, I'll wait a couple of weeks. If I get them now, I'll be too tempted, so I'll wait after the show. <laughs> you're a sampler. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, nice. I, I know they do a little bit like, like this. Go and serve sandwich again. Put me right over. <laughs> I mean, I did want to touch on as well, that, I mean, I think we've been going for half an hour here, so I don't want to make it too long to put people watching or whatever like that. I want to talk about, you know, your training, your routine, stuff like that, but I'm thinking we could say that for, like, you know, another time, another another hangout. People have got a first video to watch here, and they've been going in-depth into training um, in another hangout if you're up for that. Yeah, we could, though. Sounds good to me. I am happy with so, that. So, that was um, our first hangout, first one that's... I think others have done for YouTube, so hopefully everyone watching um, found it at least somewhat interesting. Hopefully you didn't turn off after 30 seconds. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's that. So hopefully we can get a couple more of these out with some of the other uh, guys on YouTube. These sort of interview, sort of hangouts, discussion type videos. Um, hopefully we can get a couple more, a few more people are interested, and just see how they go from there. So. Um, that's it from me. If that's everything from you, Dan, I think no we'll worries. finish this one off. Definitely. Well, thanks everyone for watching, guys. Until next time, from Shreddy Breck, Biceps Popland, Pictures <laughs> Dropland, and from Dan, dropping. any <laughs> final words? Yeah. Don't do drugs. Take your vitamins. <laughs> nah. Fantastic life. <laughs> See you later. See you later.